Hello, let's make a painting. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, to our water, uh, <laughs> ice, and uh, this looks like a face. I will take some of the brown and just put it in the middle. I'm 100% sure I'm not going to do a portrait, but uh, that does look like a face. Mm, let's spread around. Maybe a Maybe two trees in the middle. Two big trees on the horizon. We'll see about that. All right, take a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. Maybe some black. Lately I'm doing a lot of earth colors. Let's cover it up the foreground and the midground so they can start blending together. For the sky, just clear my brush, maybe a little bit of four inch. That's about it. I want to focus on the mid-ground and the horizon. Sky, middle of the day, nothing too much. I guess it's a sunny day. Okay, let's see. The foreground and the mid-ground look like a valley. I'll work a little bit more on that. Take a black paint and start forming the mid-ground. That's going to give us a good transition from the mid-ground uh, to the foreground. It's going to unite the foreground and the horizon. Maybe a little bit of blue. Yeah, I can go with that, but let me try something. I will start pushing the paint around with the palette knife and mountains. That's going to be mountains. Yep, one uh, mountain on the left side and uh, a big brother mountain on the right side. I'm going to try to search for it. Now at this point, I'm, I'm not sure exactly the mountains how they're going to be, but it does make sense because we're if we're in a valley. We're looking up the mountains. Uh, I will take some black paint from the midground. I feel like the left one need to be a little bit more pointy. No, the right one, not the left one. So I'm just going to move it around. Uh, later, I'm going to add more color to it. But at this point, I, I just want to find the shape that is Maybe some perspective lines in the mid-ground and the... Oh, I, I like that. That's going to give us a little bit more texture on the uh, foreground. Now, I'm going to take a clear brush and remove some of the water. Now, because I scratched the paper uh, with the palette knife, even if I remove uh, some of the paint, it's still going to have this... Uh, damaged pieces from the paper, which one naturally is going to be color in uh, in the whatever color I put it. So we can have some kind of reflection. Mm, obviously, the light is coming from the right side. So I think I will have to add a little bit more. Uh, now we are out of black. But I think we have to add a little bit more um, uh, dark uh, throwing shadow on the left side of each mountain. And that's why I'm going to take some blue, maybe some purple, and uh, I'm going to mix that with black. And now it's not only a throwing shadow, also is the dark side of the of the mountain. That's why I'm mixing so many colors so we can have a different uh, pigments uh, coming under. Now, no snow in these mountains. I will not go that far. Plus, I think it's a, uh, well, I can always uh, add a, a white gouache for the snow, but uh, not in this one. I'm going to try to form some kind of uh, edges. Still, I don't have a clear idea how they're going to look like, uh, but I'm I'm searching. It's, uh, it's, uh, you're searching, and uh, just like when you go outside and you... 
most of the time you see a beautiful uh, uh, landscape outside and uh, you just take a look and that's about it. But if you really start staring at it, uh, you can find all kind of small stuff, you know, trees, leaves, animals, everything is go. As more time you spend, more things you discover. So I feel like the, the painting should go like this way. As more I search, more things will come up. Remove some of the paint again. And I think I kind of find the shape. I found the shape for the left one. Maybe some hard edges. I'm more about the more, more of the, the right one, because this is the, the Big Brother mountain. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be the focus of our, our painting. So I think I want to make it very pointy. All right, let's see. A white gouache. Uh, well, maybe a little bit of snow, who knows. But it's also going to help me to form that sharp edges. Look at that. And what I'm doing is I'm putting uh, a white gouache on a... It, it, I put a lot of white gouache on the, on the palette knife and just pushing hard and try to form that sharp edges. I purposely try to get a little bit from the shadow, from the dark colors that we have, so we can have some kind of uh, a mixing and blending, but not too much, because we still want to keep the, the high contrast. I'm just gonna clear my palette knife on the foreground. All right. Uh, I think I'm done with the palette knife. All right, so this is so good. Uh, I like the mountains. They're kind of foggy on the background. Maybe some black gouache so I can make it more high contrast and maybe some sharp edges. Mm, I'm gonna emphasize that a little bit more, but I don't wanna make them exactly like I'm going to leave a little bit for your imagination. And on the foreground, because it's everything blending with the mountains, I will put some uh, lines for some grass, just to break the monotonous. Because if I leave it like this, it's gonna, uh, the mid-ground and the foreground is going to look a lot, a lot like the mountains. That's why we're going to put some tall grass. So we can have a nice transition from the mountains to the calm down valley and the foreground with the tall grass. And there you go. Watercolor abstract landscape.